Hi there, listener. You're about to experience Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and there will be plenty of game talk, but also copious amounts of crude, off-color, offensive, and immature speech. So if you are of a rather sensitive humor constitution, we're just letting you know what you're in for with this show. It has games. It has jokes. You know, just games and jokes. Take the games, take the jokes, and have a good time. Hello, Internet, and welcome to another Other Shit Monday. Tad Pog, Tad Pig, Pig Sides. I like Sad Sad Pig. Sad Pig. (laughs) Tad Pog Podcast. A bi-weekly show? I guess we should change that. Something like that. Or bi. Bi-weekly show <laughs> where two old guys talk about old games. I'm your bearded host, Tyler, and I sadly got into the PC gaming sphere late, later in life. The Okama game sphere? <laughs> the Okama game sphere. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I would have grown up playing PC games and gotten like the Sierra point and click and DOS and stuff that people have really good memories of. It is a pretty sexy lifestyle. Uh, yeah, it, it sounds like it. Hearing Wiley talk about his, his, I forget all the numbers, early Apple PC that his parents spent like three grand. And that, <laughs> oh, that, yeah. set, that set the course of his life. Then, you know, that computer. I wish I would have had that because I my first experience with a, a PC game was Diablo 2. Yeah. That was when I got on board. Uh, and I played the shit out of that and absolutely loved it. My my dad was used to me playing video games on a console, like in my room or something like that. And the family PC, as I've mentioned in uh, Masturbatory Adventures, was in the, <laughs> in the living room. That's our secondary podcast, so. <laughs> Masturbation Adventures. But my dad is very he has his he has Wolverine like senses of smell, uh, hearing, and things like that. And he's very very particular. Like I remember. My mom wrapping Christmas presents, the sound of like the tape and her setting down the tape dispenser <laughs> while he was trying to take a nap. Like she was wrapping presents, sets the tape down, you know, tapes of a present and he just barrels in and he sleeps in his underwear. So my dad's angry, <laughs> charging in in whitey tidies. He grabs the tape recorder or the tape dispenser and just slams it down over and over and over again. It's like, why are you hammering this? It's like, I'm just wrapping presents, Randy. But... So he's about sound. So I'm trying to play Diablo 2, and as I'm sure most of our listeners are probably pretty familiar with Diablo 2, you click. You click a lot in that game. So my dad is trying to watch TV, and behind me, oh all he hears God. is click, 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 And I would play that game for like six hours. So, I mean, eventually, he just fucking lost his <laughs> shit about just the click, 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 click. Tyler, just go, out, go outside, play, play with sticks, go. And he would sit me outside, he would yell, he'd get angry. And one time it was late at night, and I was just trying to play Diablo, and he was yelling at mom about it, about all the all the clicking and the clacking. Meanwhile, she's rapping, and it's just <laughs> driving him to the edge, <laughs> just building the suspense. I'm I'm pretty young, and like they're arguing about it, and my mom looks like she's about to cry, and she's like, Randy, I would rather he play those games in here with us than be on the streets doing drugs. <laughs> Because clearly, if I wasn't playing Diablo right. 2, I would just be just chasing chasing the green dragon out on the streets of Paducah, Kentucky. <laughs> well, it is, it's scientific fact, I think, that if you don't play video games, you are a drug addict. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> I'm Dave, your bespectacled host, and I never told this before. And not many people oh, know this. Shit. I don't even think Nikki knows this. <laughs> And I, it's one of those things I didn't even think about until I was at work the other day and I just happened to notice I was chewing on my knuckle a little bit mm-hmm. while I was working. And it, I looked down at my knuckle and it made me remember, I'd forgotten this, but a long, long time ago when I was like before preschool, I had a wart on every knuckle on my hand. Were you just punching frogs? I don't just, I mean, just the frog, fr- <laughs> the frog punching his mother. No. <laughs> And it's just on on each, what is this, my second knuckle? Is that you call it? Second knuckle? Middle knuckle. Depending on, yeah. I guess depending <laughs> on your knuckle perspective. I had a wart on each one, and I chewed them off. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the grimace on your Brutal. face. Brutal. I, I remember being a kid, like 
really, really young and looking and be like, I hate these things. <laughs> like I would just, <laughs> just gnaw on them. All right. You're, you're determined. All right. And then they, then they disappeared. But I was looking on Wikipedia the other day because I was like, yeah, I forgot that I had those warts. What's up with that? And I was like, where do warts come from? <laughs> <laughs> and um, they were talking about how they pretty much just usually um, in children, they just disappear. So I chewed them off for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, who knows when they will disappear? You just, you just, now people know when they're making up Dave character sheets for traits uh-huh. determined. I Ned Stark those fucking warts <laughs> right off my hand. <laughs> Warty. <laughs> Warty. So it's other, other shit Monday. Where we talk about all the other things that we want to talk about that aren't related to IGN's top 100 Super Nintendo games. Which is, let's face it, limited. Yep. Because we pretty much exclusively talk about IGN's top 100 Super Nintendo games. All the time, yeah. I mean, off the show, on the show. Sometimes I'll wake up in the middle of the night and call you to talk about it. I'll be having having intercourse with my wife, yeah. and she's like, "Why don't you talk dirty to me?" And I'm just like, Mr. Rockstar is terrible." <laughs> she she's she's tired of it. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Well, I haven't talked about books in a while. This is how long it's been for me. I finished a series of books since the last time Holy I talked about shit. them. Holy shit. So I finished, uh, well, I'm current. There will be more books. The Gentleman Bastard series by Scott Lynch. The first one being The Lies of Locke Lamora, Red Seas Under Red Skies, and Republic of Thieves are the three that are currently out. And what is the series called? Uh, the Gentleman Bastards. I, I do like that name. That I is- had no interest in reading these books <laughs> until you just... Gave me that. That name. is their uh, their gang, their thieving gang. They call themselves the Gentlemen Bastards. Is it is it spelled with an E or an A? Bastards. I think with an A. Okay. Because most of them are most of them are orphans. Yeah. So they're a. It's it's all about the the leader of the group. Basically, is Locke Lamora. He's the the brain. The thief. And then they have like in the lives of Locke Lamora, it's Locke and the the two the Sansa twins. And they each have strengths. There's it's from sh- Game of Thrones. They take, they get Sansa. It's it's, <laughs> it's they make two of her. It's pretty much I would fucking two Sansas. <laughs> fuck that. Yeah. Fuck that. Most of this is Sansa's fault. Fuck her. <laughs> she can't help it. She's a little girl. That's true. Well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Jean Luc Picard. Jean Luc Picard. Because <laughs> I I had to look. I was like Jean. How would you? Is it John? Is it Jean? Like Jean yeah. Grey? But Jean. Jean. I was unfamiliar. Because I listen to all these, so I don't read them. So I know how everything's pronounced, but I don't know how any of it's spelled. That's really bad in Wheel of Time. Yeah, that can be dangerous for fiction, and fantasy especially. Because they're they are they're tagged as fantasy mystery novels. Okay. Because it has magic, but magic is very downplayed. It's something you don't see much of. The emphasis is not on it at all. Uh-huh. It's about their heists. It's and it's set in a fantasy setting. There aren't really guns or you know, anything like that. But it's a very gray kind of fantasy setting and it's all about you know their heists and all the things that go along with people trying to sabotage them and them trying to get their it's got a, a, a underlying story that the twist happens in the third book and i did i did not see it coming at yeah. all but for anybody that likes fantasy mystery uh there's no romance really until you get to like some in the second book and then a lot in the third book so if you like romance, and then it gets it's there a little eventually. gross. And it gets <laughs> girls and boys. It's gross. Ugh. But yeah, I re- highly recommend those books. Anybody that likes fantasy, mystery, and or romance, if you're willing to stick stick with it for a little while. Cool. I may actually check those out. I wish I had more time to like read. Yeah. <laughs> because if I tried to read the books, then I wouldn't have time to do nearly as much as I do. Yeah. I've been reading the um, Torchbearer rule book. It's the new RPG by oh, Luke yeah, Crane. Oh, about that. Yeah, the guys that uh, did Burning Wheel. So I want to run a session of that for that sure. That sounds good. Because it yeah. is, it looks badass. It's like the Mouse Guard RPG just souped up a little bit. See, I want to do that too. <laughs> we got so, a lot of shit we want to do. Yeah. And Shadowrun and yeah, I Call of Cthulhu. Mm-hmm. Well, I can, run, we can, I can run Call of Cthulhu like tomorrow, like if you just wanted to pick up and do a Call of Cthulhu. Oh, there is that mo- that book that you got. Uh, I've got, yeah, I've got several. I'd and then like there's, to do that. I know you probably know the the mods um, in the back of the rule book. Yeah, so I've, I've done a few those, of those. But yeah, yeah, I've got three. Uh, I've got three settings right there. Well, that one, that big setting that you got. Yeah, I'd like to do that sometime. I think oh that'd yeah, be awesome. Yeah. So yeah, the one that would probably die in the first two encounters, and the rest <laughs> of the book is just there. Yeah. Can we do a podcast, Tyler and Dave? Talk about tabletop 
role playing games. I, I think that that falls into other shit Monday. That's other shit. So maybe one day instead of a video game, we'll talk about tabletop. Oh, that'd be awesome. Let's see, we'll see what people think about let's, that. Let's scrap. So what would you guys think about us talking about some tabletop games? <laughs> let's scrap what we were planning to do today and just talk about tabletop games. <laughs> it, it would literally, I worry that it would be a five hour podcast. And like we just kind of look at the clock and it's like, oh. It's hour two. Oh, it's hour. Mm. Now, okay, we're about just a few more things. <laughs> um, so other than reading that, I've been playing. Super House of the Dead Ninjas mm. on Steam. Um, Ashley Shake bought me that game and said, Dave, the message was hilarious when he gifted it to me. I loved it because it was, Dave, this is nothing like that other ninja game that you like so much. <laughs> she was referencing Mark of the Ninja, uh, which is all like super stealth based. And then Shake was like, but I really enjoy this game. I hope you do too. I fucking love this game. I played I seen you so playing it. It much of this game. It is essentially a randomly or procedurally generated tower that you you go down and you are a ninja and you so you've got all these special abilities like you can uh, double jump and you can throw a projectile or throw a bomb and what's so addicting about it is like there's all these okay there's all these addicting qualities about the game that kind of mesh together that just make me want to play it over and over again and that's those bombs and projectiles those can be upgraded like if you do a certain number of things in the game uh, they're essentially like mini achievements tiny little achievements they've stuffed in there where like say for instance you uh, throw 100 projectiles to kill an enemy you unlock a new projectile so you're just it's just constant unlocking Mm -hmm. for projectiles and for bombs and for weapons that you wield in hand as well nice and magic there's there's ninja magic ninja magic yes (laughs) and it's just so it is so fast-paced and action-oriented like it is very much um a twitch game like you if your reflexes are on point you're you're really going to excel in this game Mm. um I know we're not talking about this today, so I kind of want to keep it short, but check it out online if you haven't, and at least watch some gameplay or the trailer, and you'll you get an understanding of how this game plays, and you will know immediately watching it, I think, whether this is the type of game that's for you or not. It, it looked really good when you were playing it, when I was watching you play it. It is really, really fun. I wouldn't have said that I would enjoy it until after I played Rogue Legacy. Now I, can, now I have a better appreciation for games like that. Yeah, because they have some similarities mm-hmm. with Rogue, a lot of similarities. It's just super, super fast. Like, this game is... This game is super fast. Mm-hmm. I love mm-hmm. it. So thanks, Shake, for sending that to me. Send me something else. I'll talk about it. <laughs> well, speaking of sending other stuff to talk about, Drew Rowland was very kind. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, who? Oh, uh, that would be, do you, is it Lord Baron? Baron. Baron mm-hmm. Drew Rowland. Thank you, Baron Drew. Because he gifted you Walking Dead Season, season two. 2. Yeah, I'm and excited. he bought me Guacamelee Gold Edition. Oh, You've what's already, the Gold Edition? I don't know the difference. Oh. But, but I knew you, you've played Guacamelee. Oh, I love it. So as soon as I play it, then we'll have an other shit Monday about it. I love it. Yeah, let's do it. That game is so much fun. You're, you're going to dig it. Oh. And let's see. I also have a note. This is our 51st episode. So we broke, we've broken the 50 mark. And I would say by this point, if you were to line up all the Tadpog podcasts uh-huh. and the stand, we are longer than the stand. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Steven. So we're coming for you. <laughs> now, uh, what's his second longest? Second longest King book? Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Hearts of Atlantis? That one was pretty big, wasn't it? Mm. Hearts in Atlantis? Something. Nicole, which is it? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff. And I guess we should also pay homage. Starting, I guess, maybe next week, uh, we have someone who has exceeded the ranks of Baron yes. for the first time. Yes. has a, They are sitting here next to us spiritually. As our saint. He goes from squire to saint, Zachary English. Just like that. Just like that. Why is he a, why is he a saint? Because he went above and beyond. He loves the show so much, he only wanted to make it better and bought us new microphones. Nice. So Thank you, Zach. You were working on soundproofing Tanpog Studios so we can further utilize his gift. Yes. Before we start using it, I you it was a nice kick in the ass, Zach, to get that studio space up to where it needs to be. So tonight we're recording in Tadpog's side office. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so if, if things sound <laughs> weird for this episode, let's go ahead and say Wednesday is episode two. Mm. That's why we're it's in. A we're distinct in, possibility. Mm-hmm. Tadpog. We're in the Tadpog annex. <laughs> uh, and you been playing anything else this week? That is it, man. It? I am addicted to that game. Well, mm. that, well, actually, I take it back, Tyler. I've also been playing some Path of Exile. Uh, okay, how'd you like? That's, That's fair. A smooth, That's fair. Smooth That's fair. Segue. I have also been playing some Path of Exile. Really, Tyler? Maybe we should talk about it with our friends here. But other than that, <laughs> uh, furthering the, I didn't get to do as much work as I have been on the the Ultimate Steam Challenge. So now I have started a Bard's Tale, which I don't really understand Steam's organization. A virus named Tom is in the A's, uh-huh. but a Bard's Tale is, is in, in the, the B's. B's. And Jacob was very pumped. Oh, man, you're going to be playing Civilization pretty soon. Nope, that's in the S's under Sid Meier's Civilization. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah. And then, although that makes me play Skyrim sooner because it's not in the S's, it's in the E's. Elder Scrolls. it's Elder Scrolls. But I I made my character. I didn't get to play that much of it. I remember I was psyched in 2004 when it came out because I remember reading about it in a gaming magazine. I was like, this sounds amazing, a bard's tale. I was really into bards and D&D at the moment. And that was when Jacob and I were, uh, Jacob York of Wolf Fighting fame, mm-hmm. were living together in a extraordinarily shitty apartment up above a Dairy <laughs> Queen in yeah. Murray, Kentucky. Like, rent was $100 for each of us to God, live in this apartment. I love that. I would it love was, to pay that today. But we paid... <laughs> We made it was as expensive as a nice apartment because our electricity bill was like three hundred, four hundred a month. Was it just like the insulation, just horrible? I th- yeah, I think because we constantly kept the air conditioner turned up and it was always super hot. I don't know if like other people were siphoning off our electricity in the other apartments because it was kind of a shady place. Like you're paying for the electricity for the entire apartment yeah. building. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very distinct possibility. And then. I mean, I moved out because Meg and I uh, got a place together. Jacob didn't move out until he leaves his house to go to class, comes downstairs, and there's just blood all over his car. And he's like, yeah, yeah, it's time for that here. (laughs) Human blood? I've heard the story, but I don't know the... Uh, Unless someone, like, killed an animal and drug it down his car, because he hadn't driven it. He parked, and then when he came back, it looked like someone had gotten a fight and, like, fallen on it and then got up and kept moving. Shit. So... But Bard's Tale, and uh, I will finish the rest of the basement collection. The I, basement collection? Uh-huh. That, the, the church basement collection? Ch- <laughs> it's just a butthole touching game. <laughs> it's like it's like whack-a-mole. You use the Wiimote? And yes. just, or, or, or it's the only other game you use, the Donkey Konga. Uh, um, oh, God. Um, <laughs> do, 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 do. All right, Nintendo. If we see this on the next WarioWare, we're suing your asses. <laughs> Note the date that this show was published. But it was a much earlier episode when I mentioned the basement collection. The guy who did the Super Meat Boy, oh yeah, packaged all of his games together, and I beat Ether, which was one of his first right, games right. a long time ago. So I will finish yeah. up the like four other games in the basement collection, and then I think it's on. It's pretty soon that I'll start Arkham City. Yeah, because I got that in the recent WB bundle. Yes, I did. So too. I bought it. I bought Arkham City day sixty dollars day one. <laughs> I have I've played it for like ten minutes maybe, and now I just got it for four dollars off the the humble bundle. As part I of a bundle, on that. yeah. Lesson lesson to be learned there, kids. Yeah. That I can't follow too frequently because I know I get excited about a new game and like I just want to buy it, even though I don't even though I don't don't have the time to sit there and play mm-hmm. it right then. So unless lesson for any adults with money, unless you have the intention and ability to sit and then play it, wait. Yeah. Patient gamers. Bioshock Infinite is the only game like this year that I've like I bought and then immediately went home and played and beat. Yeah. So that's well, that's Bioshock. Yeah. There are, there are certain games like that's how you know that is a good game or that's the upper echelon is where you will change your schedule to play that game mm-hmm. as opposed to you know just purchasing it and then waiting to play it. That's always an indicator for me. That's all that I've been playing. You talk about. Talk about Path of Exile and its relations. Mm-hmm. It's in the relations in Path of Exile. Do I hear? Am I hearing a train? Do I hear a train? Uh, no, I don't. Do you hear one? I don't know. I, I don't know if there is a train for. <laughs> I don't. I don't hear one. Okay. Unless it's the Dave Reads from Wikipedia. That would be the one. That's the one. <laughs> choo, choo. I thought you were talking about our reoccurring character, the train. Trainzy, the train. <laughs> the one that we hear every Monday. 
<laughs> Trainsy, the tadpog mascot. Yeah. God, I'm going to have to illustrate that now, I think. <laughs> That'll, we'll just change our album artwork to Trainsy, the tadpog mascot. <laughs> he's the grand He's the grand train that connects all the tadpog nations together in all the houses. <laughs> oh, my God, I love it. <laughs> We're going to trick so many, like, older gentlemen who are into toy trains into listening to our show at least oh once. man it's a train so, podcast so welcome guy <laughs> i hope that you enjoyed the show even though you were initially disappointed that it wasn't about model trains well, welcome Vito from the sopranos <laughs> listening to our show all right guys path of exile is an online action rpg set in a dark fantasy world it is developed by New Zealand-based independent developer Grinding Gear Games, which I only assume was founded by Peter Griffin because mm, it good. really grinds Grind his my gears. gears. <laughs> it's a downloadable, free-to-play game supported by, quote, ethical microtransactions, unquote. <laughs> ethical. This is really interesting. I like this. Um, on January 23rd, 2013, the open beta was released. By March 2013, the subscriber base had reached 2 million players. And then Mm. the game left open beta and was just recently fully released on Steam and on their own website, pathofexile.com. That was just, what, September? Mm Mm-hmm. Which I... You told me about this. I downloaded it. I played it. I can enjoy a free game, but I have to say, like, despite what I like about the game, I am... I'm pretty sick of the free-to-play model in general. Yeah, I am too, particularly for MMOs. Yeah. Which this, I think I'm okay with it more so in this case for Path of Exile because it's not an MMO. It's it's kind of in a weird gray area where you play with a whole bunch of people or, I'm sorry, you don't really, you, you log into a server with a whole bunch of other players. And they try to sell you gold from Korea. You, well, right. <laughs> <laughs> so there's another similarity to an MMO. <laughs> Um, but once you log in, you really don't see any other players unless you really want to. Yeah, th- that part sounds great to me. That's the only part. Talking about Deshaun Miller, like each and every one of us have the same style of playing MMO where it's like, we don't want to fuck with anybody yeah. else. Yeah, I This don't... massive multiplayer game, just let me play it alone. Right, Thank please. You. Please, let me play it alone until I get high enough level to where I can't progress by myself anymore and I'm forced to make friends. <laughs> or go to real life friends and be like, you have to play this game. Yep. <laughs> That's what I like. I like playing with people I know in real life yeah. and not dealing with strangers. With a few exception, in Final Fantasy XI, I made some friends that I enjoyed playing with in Final Fantasy XI. Um, I'd love to be able to find them so I could be like, hey, listen to this podcast that yeah. Melf and Glim are doing. But That would be awesome. So, J- Josie Method X, if somehow you've heard this and you're listening, hey! <laughs> but I, you told me about Path of, Path of Exile, it is, it is reminiscent to Diablo. The Diablo cl- directing with a mouse, clicking, hotkeys for abilities, yeah, item, loot, you know, that kind of, well, it's, that kind of game. It's clearly inspired by Diablo 2, I think. Because it looks a lot like Diablo 2. It does. And, I mean, the graphics look better. I don't know. When's the last time you played Diablo 2, Tyler? Uh, I watched Blake play quite a bit of it um, two years ago. He got on a big Diablo 2 click. Uh, click. Uh, a big <laughs> Diablo 2 kick in, in seminary. And he played through every single bit of it again. To Pack prep. the shit out of it yeah. and play through every bit of it again. Do you recall it looking... I remember when that game came out, I thought it looked awesome. Yeah, I was but, blown away. But I played it probably about two years ago, too. And when I loaded it up, I was like, this looks awful. Yeah, it like, does. It looks really bad. Watching him play it again, I was like, oh, man. And to think I played this game so much, I burn up like... I burn up my computer playing it. I had to get a new one. Because I remember I would play it, and then everything would slow down like I had lag. And I would tell Brandon, because he was the computer friend at the time, I was like, man, it's lagging. It's like, are you playing on Battle.net? It's like, no, I'm just playing single player. Well, it shouldn't lag. <laughs> right. But it was. I had to, every time I wanted to play it, my computer was dying. So I had to do a disk defrag to get it to run okay. And then once it would lag out, I'd have to stop, defrag, oh, let it cool down, God. and rinse and repeat until it was just <laughs> dead. <laughs> yeah, sounds like you might have had like a hard drive issue there or something. I buddy. had a compact. That's what the, <laughs> that's what the issue was. 
but I, because you told me about it, I was like, all right, sounds cool. I We played through Diablo 3 pretty much all, we played through the first three modes together. Yeah, first three difficulties. all the three difficulties together. And I was like, okay, I'm down for that. So I started it up, played it. I was immediately kind of soured on it because I hit start, I go through it, decide to be, I'm going to be a witch. So I choose the witch, and then as soon as I log into the game, I'm just, I can't even see my character. I'm just hit with this massive wall of <laughs> just gold for sale. <laughs> where where do I find the, the, the henchman? And just, just wa- I can't see anything for just the scrolling wall of text. And I'm just like, oh, maybe I didn't miss this shit very much. <laughs> so I had to figure out how to block. Once I filtered out everything, yeah. then I was free to enjoy the game. <laughs> Yeah, I turned that stuff off too, and I figured out that I could mm-hmm. because it does get annoying. It's it, it was real bad. Like I remember, at least like in Diablo three, they had a little box that was contained to, or in Final Fantasy, it's the lower text bar of the screen. But like in Path of Exile, it was huge chunk in the middle of your screen. Yeah, I don't understand that because <laughs> that's not how mine was set up. So like, because you sent me a text saying, "How the fuck do I get this all this text off my screen?" I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I. That's. Yeah, it was look like I was trying to play. It was like the screensaver for like the Matrix ones <laughs> and zeros coming thinking. down. I was trying to play with that over my character. What are you doing? I'm reading the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, but yeah, filters all good. I played. I put a few hours into it. Uh, I certainly. It took me a little while to figure it out exactly. Like because it was the traditional Diablo two. You play, you get loot, you open up, you have the loot all your equipment slots and the right. squares for all your loot and it's different sizes. It's very which, right out of Diablo 2. To tie back to what we were talking about earlier, which no one will care about, but maybe you, I hope, <laughs> is that's how Torchbearer inventory is all set up. Mm. It's done like like inventory is really super important. Mm. So it's set up by, by it's a slot system. See, I liked, I like that a lot. And that's how when I think most tabletop games should be done because... You get People to a get certain frustrated point, yeah, and, and no one keeps track of it yeah. because it's not easy to keep track of. I try to enforce it, and then, of course, then once someone buys a bag of holding, then the whole... Null and void. That, and 40 pages of rules just moot and because of the magic item. Yeah, and that's one of... Honestly, the main reason to buy a bag of holding is to relieve yourself of the guilt of not knowing whether or not you can mm-hmm. actually carry all the shit that your characters carry. And then, yet yeah, there's no challenge to, like... If you find a million gold pieces, it should be like, how do you move around a million gold <laughs> right. pieces? There should be some thought behind that. Uh-huh. Otherwise, like, the bottomless bag, we got like eight <laughs> of them. So. so, yeah, sorry for that little uh, tabletop interjection. But yeah, it is very much um, the inventory system is important in Path of Exile because like in Diablo and Diablo 2 and Diablo 3, loot is so important in this mm-hmm. game. Because I got... Because you had to, I had to find a spell first, and then I had to figure out how to equip a spell onto an item, and then because I had, because I got your uh, left click fireball, and I eventually got a right click ice blade, and then what I really liked as I was progressing through that, like the ninja game you've been playing, the uh-huh. more you use the spells, they continually level up. Yeah, that's one of the things I really like about this game is that okay, it's similar in Diablo two where you've got equipment that have slots on them where you can put gems. One of my favorite aspects of Diablo games, period. Yeah. I love, I love gems. Oh, it's awesome. And um, what I like about in Path of Exile is exactly what you said. It's got like this Final Fantasy VII materia system where um, you affix a gem into a socket, and as you progress and gain experience with it in your socket, um, it levels yeah, up with you. Experience in your socket. <laughs> It's like, it's like getting used to a butt plug. It's like the experience in your socket. Can we? We need to stop and do a GoDaddy check for experience it in your socket. <laughs> Dot com taken. Dot net's available. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also like Diablo two. All the areas except for the encampments are randomly generated. Mm. So there's a lot of replayability. I've gotten to appreciate that a lot more than than I did at first. Remember, I hated that about Diablo when I first started playing Diablo 2. Oh, yeah. But then, like, now I appreciate the random generation to be able to go in and play something different. I love it. It's a completely different experience from 
you know, standard static instances and that kind of thing, which I love those too. It's just interesting to see how the two feel completely different. And side note, since you brought up Materia, I remember at first when I started playing 7, I hated the Materia system. Really? I loathed it. I just wanted to either level up and learn it, or I wanted Espers from 6. Uh-huh. And, but now, now as I've matured, you know... Yes, I, Tyler, uh, I do know. I do think <laughs> of all the Final Fantasies, the Materia system is probably my favorite oh, magic yeah. system of all the Final Fantasies. I agree. 7, I think, is a, is a fantastic game. Not my favorite Final Fantasy by any means, but my favorite magic system. Yeah, I really like the magic system in Final Fantasy 7. Check this segue out. Mm. I like this. I also like the skill sphere in Final Fantasy X. Okay, yeah. Which is essentially how skills work in Path of Exile. I, I, yeah, I remember I, when I was trying to level up, and it's and it's not like in, in 10, I got frustrated because you could just fill out the whole sphere. That was it. You could just... And be done. Everybody, the only character that was unique was Yuna because she had summons. Yeah. Everyone else could be everyone else. It was... It got shitty after a while. Path of Exile's sphere is so it large. It's huge. You need to pick your specialization and chart out how you want to follow it. Because and it's it's everywhere. Like, if you want to be a necromancer, you have to try to plot out your path mm-hmm. to be very specific if that's what you want to do. Your path of exile. Your, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> It's like the part. Blow my movie. mind. It's like the part in the movie where they mention the title <laughs> in the dialogue. <laughs> See now, okay, now I got to bring up this for the show notes. If we can find it, the um, there's a skit in Upright Citizens Brigade. If you remember that sketch, show, yes, I do. Where uh, the guy who would try to make movies were uh, the try to well try to fit a titular line into movies that didn't have one, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, you remember that time when. You're watching Out of Africa and Meryl Streep's just like, oh God, can't wait to run over all these all these Africans and get out of Africa. <laughs> so that was never in it. I remember when when Han Solo, he was like, oh God, I'm tired of all these Star Wars. That was not a lot. I love Upright Citizen Brigade so much. If you're a fan, that's early Amy Poehler. If you're a fan yeah. of Amy Poehler, that is where she cut her teeth, and it's so fucking good. It is good. I haven't seen enough of it, but. Is that on Netflix? Do you know? I don't know. I got the DVDs, so so you can borrow the DVDs. You're not joking about that skill tree being huge. Mm -hmm. There are 1,350 skills that you can choose from. And you're not going to get to level 1,300. (laughs) Yeah, because that's the way it works is every time you level, you can pull up the skill tree and choose a new passive skill. So it's really interesting when you have so many options because Mm -hmm. the ability to customize your character with a combination of i don't know pick 1300 skills now choose your equipment oh put gems in those pieces of equipment Mm. to give you active abilities um i mean you're not going to have a character in the game that's the same yeah everyone's going to be pretty unique individual snowflakes which is interesting because physically we all look exactly the same (laughs) Because there's no character customization oh. as far as like how you look. <laughs> yeah. It's like you just choose one of the classes, choose Marauder. All right. You look like every other Marauder in the game <laughs> except for your equipment. Because that's what bothered me. Because I, I, I preferred the skill system in Diablo 2 to Diablo 3, but it got out of hand whenever you could just pump up one skill so much out of the other. Like you'll run into a lot of paladins that had thorns right. fucking crank to the max, and that was it. Or That's how I got through as my first character, yeah. Vincent. Or jo- uh, Josh played, he pumped zeal up way high. So he would. He said, I would tear through things pretty quickly, but I'd also stand there for 10 seconds and finish swinging before I could keep going. <laughs> Holy shit. That's Chris Agram shit right there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that'll be for the show notes for the Chris Agram. <laughs> And then Diablo 3, of course, you you could change your skills frequently, but once you unlock them, you just had them. So right. Diablo 3, while I think we enjoyed it a lot while we were playing it, but in retrospect, it was not very good. I would, I would recommend Path of Exile over Diablo 3 easily. I'd recommend Diablo 2 probably over Diablo 3. I wish, I don't actually, I was going to say, I wish Blizzard would like re-release Diablo 2 with like, re envision graphics and stuff, yeah. but why? Path, there's a, Path that's why we have Path of Exile. <laughs> Path of Exile is, to put it in tabletop RBG terms, which probably only Tyler, Miller, Jacob, 
and myself will understand this <laughs> reference. So you're welcome, everyone else. <laughs> but Path of Exile is like Pathfinder. Um, and Diablo 2 is like Dungeons and Dragons 3.5. Because it's all in the same spirit. Um, it's just there are new editions of the game. But Pathfinder um, really harkens back to D&D 3.5. That's like Path of Exile really harkens back to Diablo 2, mm. even though there's a Diablo 3 out. Okay. Yeah, because I certainly I'd, I wouldn't mind playing more of it. I didn't get a chance to sink as much time into it as I would have liked to, but for where, where I'm kind of burnt out on games like this, Diablo 3 really did a number on me as far as enjoying games like this. Yeah. But... Path of Exile with all the options and it was still fun. I skipped through a lot of the reading. There yeah, was a lot, I did too. a lot of reading. I did, and, and there's and, no problem. <laughs> you're right. No, it doesn't hinder you gameplay wise. You could totally skip the story, um, which I totally did. I didn't read any of the lore <laughs> at all. So at the, all. That guy's an exclamation point. Click, 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 click. Okay, I'm going. Yeah. Sign. I mean, well, it's like games like this. I don't think by design are great games. Mm. These overhead action RPGs where all you do is click. I don't think they're great games. What I do think, but I love them. I think they're great therapy because that's how I feel. Like when I play one of these games, I just feel like I'm soothed. It's mm. like I don't have to really it's think familiar, too much, but my lit. brain's being stimulated. Mm. Yeah. It's um, a good wind down and go to sleep game. For you, maybe. I mean, I played. God, for me, it's a I may not be going uh, yeah to sleep ever because I am addicted to this. Because I remember grinding in Diablo three, which sucks that you had to do so much of it if you wanted to succeed in the game. Yeah, grinding and grinding and grinding, Ooh. which we could do. We could do a, a long episode <laughs> of Diablo three, blushing mm, just grinding. Mm. And I listen. I listened to a whole book of Wheel of Time. Just grinding in Inferno, trying to beat Diablo three. It was just <laughs> never did it. Yeah. So I I stopped stopped hard in chapter chapter two on Inferno mode of Diablo three, and I uninstalled it and never went back. You got further than me because no, actually we got to we got to two. Yeah. Together, and I guess I you, borrow, you like, just tried for a lot longer than I did. Yeah, I borrowed. Blake Woods is very good at it. He he stuck with it a lot longer than I did. I borrowed a bunch of his gear, and that's what got me through. And then, okay, I'm not having fun anymore. Yeah. I don't want to do this. And I quit. Have you played uh, Torchlight? Not to be confused with Torchbearer, the tabletop <laughs> game I've been talking about, or Torchwood, the Doctor Who spinoff, <laughs> right? Or Deadwood. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> Or Woodstock? I don't know. Let's keep going. <laughs> or, um, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I own Torchlight 1 and Torchlight 2. Now I'll get to them on the Great Steam Challenge, <laughs> but I have not played them yet. I own them as well. I've played Torchlight 1, but not 2 yet. I really liked the style of 1 because it's all a little more cartoony, uh, but it's more in the, it felt more like in the original Diablo style where you, in Torchlight 1 you go into like a building and you just go down, mm. you descend. It doesn't feel as open as Diablo 2 or Path of Exile feels where you've yeah. got like wide landscapes that you travel. It, it seemed more um, claustrophobic. Okay. And I haven't played 2 yet. I and Torchlight 1 being a single player. You can't... This right. kind of game not being multiplayer is strange. It but. really, really is. That, and it, it makes it feel even more claustrophobic, which I don't know if it was done by design or if it's just a happy coincidence that it worked out that way. But that honestly is the reason I stopped playing Torchlight 1 because I realized as I was playing it that games like this aren't nearly as fun unless there are other people that I can compare myself to yeah isn't that weird like it's it's just the fact that you, that i know other people aren't playing this game just completely demotivated me because i was just like i don't need to get the best gear because as long as i have gear that's good enough to yeah, get me through to the end win. yeah who cares so it's kind of mm -hmm. weird i haven't played two yet but maybe when you get to that in your steam challenge we can play together i know yeah. wiley ammons is a torchlight fan I'm sure he'll be down so that's what that'll be our plans when I get to the T's. So in twenty, yeah, check back in twenty sixteen. Yeah, <laughs> I like that we both had the est same estimate of time that it take three years. Because once that being the T's, that's I'll be going through Skyrim and shit like that before. So yeah, that's a big chunk. Uh, so you mentioned you played a witch in Path of Exile. Mm -hmm. Was there any reason why? Just 
more interested in spellcasting. I was magic. more interested in spellcasting, yeah, because yeah. I knew you were the barbarian equivalent, yeah, right? I chose Marauder. So I figured I would go the opposite way and deal with magic. Plus, I often I find myself in games like this. I always play the girl character. Yeah, that's true. I never really thought about it. Did you play an Amazon in Diablo two? I did. And then I know you played a wizard in um, Diablo three. Mm-hmm. And my my follow up characters are usually girls too. Hmm. But I did the, kind of Ultima Online is what did that to me because I remember I had Tyronius was my ultimate Ultima Online character. But you play a girl. And pretend to be a girl in Ultima Online, it was much easier because guys are just giving you shit, shit all the time. Yep. Like you're like, hey, I'm my brother's account, and they're just throwing gold <laughs> and uh what is what was the most powerful Valerian? No, that's Game of Thrones. What's the It's the, uh it's Valorite. Valorite. Mm-hmm. They're just throwing Valorite gear at you and shit like that just because, hey, I may have a vagina. They're like, Oh my god, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Need anything for your house? No, <laughs> uh, what was it? Uh, Wes Walker would, he was a tamer and he tamed a frog and he would walk around town being like, oh, my frog is sick and that needs, was me. needs surgery. You did that, <laughs> that too? Was, no, that was me. Oh, okay. <laughs> and people I told would you just throw story. a build at you. Okay. Yeah, it was, <laughs> oh God, that was hilarious. My frog is sick and needs an operation. <laughs> and then like, some people would just ignore me, but then other people would just be like, yeah, all right, that's pretty funny. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> um. There were like six classes in this game, mm. Marauder, Witch, and Ranger, which I think is interesting because like those three are all single ability based. Marauder is strength, Ranger is dexterity, and then Witch is intelligence. Mm-hmm. And then you've got three other classes that are hybrids of that. Um, for example, the Duelist is a dex strength hybrid, and the Shadow, which is like a rogue, is a dex intelligence hybrid. And then you've got the cleric. I can't remember what they call him. A Templar. And he that. is strength intelligence hybrid. Hmm. So it's it's interesting okay. the way that they do this. And each class ability is assigned a color. So like strength is red. So you know always when you're out adventuring and you pick up a red gem, it's going to be more beneficial to a marauder than it would a witch. Okay. Um, unless you are super high level, which I believe 100 is the level cap, which there are people who've reached it. Um, the further you've gone that tree, maybe the cloudier it gets as far as like what color you stick to. Okay. Because I like, the main thing I hated about Diablo 3 was if something didn't pertain to your main stat, oh, yeah. did not Garbage. fucking matter. Yeah. There was no reason. That, I guess it was just, I can't help but feel just cheated because they make that be... Random gear, only one type of gear is important for you. Oh, look, we happen to have this auction house that right. where people can sell this the shit that you don't want. You can sell it, and mm-hmm. we get a cut of it. And it's just like oh. it feels dirty. Yeah, Blizzard, come on, you World of Warcraft is the like the biggest thing ever. Like you're, you're good. You don't have to fuck us over like this. Yeah, but it just man, ugh, just still have. Such a bad. I mean, I'll yeah. I'm gonna play Diablo four. I'm not gonna con like oh, I'm yeah. done. I'm done with Diablo. I'm not. No, gonna, I'm, I'm not, not gonna done. Pretend. No, I'll play. And it. I'll probably <laughs> play the Diablo three expansion, and especially because they're closing the they at least rid of the auction house. At least the real money auction house. I don't know if they're getting rid of all auction houses. Oh, I'd prefer all of it just. Gone. I would too. Get rid of the gold auction house too, because yeah. it's it's bullshit. Like if that's the point of an auction house is to sell things that you don't need. Mm-hmm. And in order to drive traffic to that auction house, I feel like that's why Blizzard made the changes to gear that they did, because they wanted people to use the auction house. It's like there was already a need for the auction house. You don't need something on top of it to entice people to use it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I like the auction house in... Like Final Fantasy, like in a, in a big MMO, the auction houses. Oh yeah, and it drives and creates the interesting economy that right. people can study and figure out. But in a game like this, it's just it's clearly just cash grab. Those people who are willing to spend more real life money over time right. are going to be better than you. Yeah, and uh, mm, mm, mm. Path of Exile, play it. Find us. We're on Steam. We got a Steam group. Yeah. It's free. You can just download it. You'll see us playing it. Friend us. Join the Steam group. Play yep. too. I just got my Marauder up to level 22 today, and he is 
all he's just tanked out. He is just tank alicious. So okay, I've got his armor up. All his skills that I've selected are for armor and energy resistances mm. and hit points and all See, that. I'm, a, I'm on board. That's the kind of marauder I would also play if I chose a marauder. Well, and I'm kind of kicking myself because I've gotten to level 22 and he hasn't died yet. So I don't know what happens when you die in this game <laughs> because he was the first character I created. Um, so I'm kicking myself because I did not create him as a hardcore character. Because mm. if I'm the further and further I make it with him without dying, the more I'm just like, damn it, I should have made him hardcore. Because I don't know, I figured your your curse with internet connections would would deter me from ever like heart. Nope, nope, don't 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 trust <laughs> Comcast or Inside or anything enough to ever do a hardcore. Character. I think that was geographical because I haven't had internet problems here in Paducah moving back. But in no. Lexington, it was just oh, awful. Man. Oh man, it was the worst. Forget gaming online. Somehow, Nikki and I both managed to play World of Warcraft for like four years there. I don't know. I don't know how. <laughs> so you'd play it. I'd play it. Definitely. Yeah. I, I will probably, like, if we have, after we finish Borderlands 2 co-op, then I really think Path of Exile would be a good land game for us to get together and play. Awesome. I think it's good. I'm in 100%. Do you have achievements for this game? I don't. I don't. I didn't play enough of it that I feel qualified to, to really do achievements. I okay. thought about doing it for Diablo 2 and Diablo 3, but like... Then they really... had... Well, Diablo 3 had achievements. Yeah. Uh, which this game does too on Steam. I guess I don't have any prepared, but I really want to say "Living on a Prayer" is a Templar achievement, just because I like the title. Okay, <laughs> man, I'm assuming you got to just I don't know, cast a spell or something. You unlock it. <laughs> yeah, you kill me with a spell. There you go. And then I, I don't really have beards and glasses either because I mean it, everything sounds good, but I haven't gotten in depth. It was more of I felt from my side it was more of a critique of this kind of game this genre. Yeah, yeah. Overall, this this genre I feel a little burnt out on, but Path of Exile gives me hope that it's not dead for me yet. Yeah. So I, it's a it's a good beard and it's a good pair of glasses. <laughs> well, good. And you know what? It's Other Ship Monday or Sad Pig or whatever we want to call it. So we don't have to do beards and glasses if we don't want to. Tyler, well, that's that's really how do you more feel about a, that? I feel like unless we're talking about a game specifically, yeah. So. Um, we talked about moving calls to Monday shows. Mm. You want to do that? Yes, please. All right. Some people called us. Hey, Tyler and Dave. This is Phil Hawkins from Salem, Oregon. Um, sitting here in the back of my car uh, in a Trader Joe's parking lot with my three-year-old son, Arthur, because this is what you do on a Sunday when you're trying to get out of your wife's hair and um, just trying to burn time. So, giving you guys a call up because um, I've been out of commission for the past three months or so. My computer has been on the fritz and I've been a bit too lazy to uh, catch up um, or get it fixed. But um, I just listened to the Jungle Strike episode and and heard you guys calling me out for uh, a theme key challenge. And I think I have a time set for Saturday, Saturday, uh, November 9th. That should be this Saturday if you guys are are running it uh, this week. We'll see. But um, I should be available midnight, midnight Pacific Standard Time. I'm not quite sure what that is, Kentucky Standard Time, uh, 3 a.m. there. But you guys get online there, toss up a a, a Steam key, and I'll make sure to be available for for that challenge. So um, that's it for now. i got a whole lot of stuff on my mind, but um, I've missed, like, you know, three months of episodes, so it's uh, too much for me to put on one one phone call. I will leave you with something fun, though. Um, Arthur, can you say Gooder for Tyler and Dave? Say Gooder. Gooder. There you go. That's my boy. Can you say Church Basement? Church Basement. Okay, it sounds like Church Spaceship, but I think that's pretty good. Do you guys take it easy and um, have fun playing NHL? And uh, keep up the good work, guys. Take it easy. (laughs) That was the fucking best thing ever. (laughs) That was the best thing ever, Tyler. <laughs> that was, I, what Phil did for us. So, I f- fuck that you being on time. I'm I'm going to give you a gift, <laughs> Phil. Uh, You're gonna give him a Steam gift. I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a Steam gift. That was fucking worth it. Oh my god, that was awesome. Because I I mentioned whenever he was he was first to uh, come to 
the first one to put contact out to us in support of the whole kerfuffle. So I was like, I'm going to do something nice for him. He wasn't even listening to the show early then. That was during this hiatus. Yeah. So he was supporting us even then. So defiling your child's vocabulary and coming to our <laughs> aid. Yeah, I'll give you a Steam gift. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Phil and Arthur. We hope that, uh, um, Arthur, if you listen every week, I hope that you pay special attention to the disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> He sounds like he's got a pretty good humor constitution. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Some other people called us. Yeah. Tyler Day, this is Phil Hawkins over in Salem, Oregon. Uh, just finished listening to Side Pig, Pad Pig, formerly other shit Mondays, and I am in, fully in. And um, I don't know, I think if you want to really, really get other people on board, you need to ditch Sycamore Drive and have your own unique introduction song for Side Pig, which I'm going to give to you right now. Side Pig, Side Pig, funny masturbation stories. Tyler and Dave are from Kentucky. Side Pig is the cure for AIDS. All right, use it or don't. As far as I'm concerned, it's your own intellectual property. Take it easy, kids. <laughs> yep, thank you, ready to use it. Yep. <laughs> I think, Megalixer, please, I beg of you, I beg of you, please, if you will make Phil's song, we will use it. I Right? We'll use yep, it as a yep. theme song for yep, Megalixer cover Phil's song. Holy shit, please. <laughs> <laughs> I can't beg you enough. I'm, I'm on my knees, Tyler, am I not? <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> I, let's, yeah. let's face it, though. I'm sure Arthur came up with that song. Yep. So we probably need to check with him before. <laughs> Claiming rights. <laughs> Thanks for calling again, Phil. <laughs> Tadzog Nation, this is Squire Zach calling in, and luckily I haven't been put on the early silent list, but uh, I've got a few things to respond to. First off, uh, Dave, you asked about the voice that called into the bathroom whenever I was in Pennsylvania, and I have to admit, there was a little bit of shame in the voice. It was not disguised at all. He was definitely a man's voice, but it had a little bit of anxiety, maybe like, uh, I don't know if you want to do this, but I'm just throwing it out there because you were kind of cute, and that's really what freaked me out about the entire situation. Two, uh, Miller of Pilot Wings fame just recently told a story about me, and I have to admit, every time there's a Zach story, I kind of cringe because I don't know what's coming because there are a lot of them. So Miller did not mention the uh, 38 to 72 other times that I used the car cigarette lighter and nothing happened. And just to clear up some fallacies in the story, it was in Chattanooga where we stopped at the rest stop, and we took out the fuse to the emergency flasher lights, and it wasn't at the auto parts store, but Miller didn't tell you that he took my cigarette lighter out of the car and threw it onto the beach. So, um, yeah, I eventually got that back after we searched through some sand. But, uh, yeah, so that one's done. And uh, now, Tyler, i got to tell you, you need to go back and watch Reboot. Because the reason Glitch did not work for Enzo was because it was destroyed by Megabyte whenever he flung Bob into the net. He crushed it a little bit, and Enzo was able to use it because technically Enzo was a guardian. Although the gun is never commented on in the entire series, it was just put away by Bob, and somehow Enzo got a hold of it. Not really sure how that happened. But, also, Bob was never a bad guy. He's always kind of a hippie type, peace, love, and he didn't go around beating the shit out of people. He wanted the viruses and the uh, sprites to live in harmony, but you know how viruses are. Always trying to get the better of people. But anyway, I am going to get off of here because I can't think of anything else to say and I think I hit my three key points. So you guys have a good show. Keep it up and I will keep listening. Zach, can you please put up a PowerPoint presentation of your three key point speech? <laughs> <laughs> and that's 
Well, well, you're now since you didn't know that before. Now Saint Zach, no longer Squire Zach. There's, there's our tra- mascot. There's Trainsy, <laughs> the, the Ted Pog Train <laughs> pulling into the station. Here's Zach's calling in. I'll make an appearance. <laughs> Thanks, Trainsy. <laughs> <laughs> she answered back. <laughs> Well, Zach, I'm impressed by your ears that you can hear just the shame and how that person thought you were cute just by <laughs> just by the the oral sex request. <laughs> but I I will go back. Um, I will I'll watch the reboot of reboot. Re reboot. The re reboot. The re reboot. <laughs> yeah, Zach knows a lot about reboot. You know, yeah, I'm impressed. I'm gonna go ahead and say he knows more about it than both of us combined. Yep, because I, I know nothing <laughs> other than they look weird and they used to give me nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> and Squire, no more, Zach. Squire, mm-hmm. no more. Mm-hmm. We are easily swayed by things like microphones, which you like sent us. So money and children singing songs. Yeah, or children saying gooder. Yeah, we're we're. They were swayed. So, okay. So, Harold, Harold, Arthur. <laughs> there, there we go. There we go. And Phil's son has Phil, a moniker. Harold. Yeah. Well, let's just piss Phil off and not give nope, him, nope. Not give only, him the title. Only, Arthur, only does. Arthur gets it. All right. <laughs> we got more calls. Yeah. Thanks for calling, Zach. We love you. And thanks for clarifying the Miller stuff. Miller, I challenge you to call back in and refute Zach's claim. <laughs> Fucking Pat Hog, indeed. Tyler, Dave, this Paul. So, uh, I have a lot of free time coming up uh, with vacation and stuff. Uh, today is the 6th of November uh, that I'm calling you guys. So, I figure I can get you in contact with uh, you guys through the Padlog Facebook page and get you on the show fairly soon. Um, after that, I just listened to your other shit Mondays of Phoenix Wright. I would like to petition for Baronhood if you guys are okay with that. Uh, all right. Later. Have a good week. So many Baron requests. Mm-hmm. Well, petition accepted. Okay. So we'll, we'll review. We'll review your claim, mm-hmm. Paul, and when and we'll let you know shortly. Once we receive the Steam game. <laughs> <laughs> well, once once we're actually on what's Phil been or what's what's Paul been playing. So we've been okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. But it's been so it's we're holding ransom until we 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 <laughs> accept it. We're not rejecting. We accept it. Like this is this is this this is distinct. This mm-hmm. needs to be reviewed. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so we'll have a link to what's Paul been playing in the show notes. People can go check out Definitely. what Paul's been playing. I don't. He. We were talking about being on the show, you know, mm-hmm. and there's an option of like a webcam, and I don't know whether I haven't decided whether I want to do that or not. Because then, like, mm-hmm. knowing me, here's what I'm going to worry about. Like, just for like this one episode of what's Paul been playing, I'm I'm sure I'll go through like extraordinary efforts to get like a three point lighting system and like everything going <laughs> on me. And because that's just how I roll. And mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. I, it's a lot easier for me to just say, I don't think I'm going to do the webcam. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you just hear my disembodied voice like you mm, do normally on mm. Mondays and Wednesdays. Or let's have the eight big pictures of us up. There we go. Like, like, like on the news. Like I, this. Yeah. Or we'll cone in mean, where we cut out their mouth yeah. and see our mouths moving. <laughs> Maybe I can get like a two frame animated GIF <laughs> of like our mouths just opening and closing. <laughs> we can just throw that up. Thanks for calling, Paul. I get, um, we've had so many P calls today, except for Zach. So, um, we have one more call, and I hope that it's also from a P person. Mm-hmm. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Lord Mike at Purdue here with this week's Would You Rather. I apologize that this phone call is rather short. We've got a big sale going, trying to get ready for it. But I definitely did not want to be eerily silent. So this week's Would You Rather, Would You Rather be consistently followed around in your everyday life by 32 ducks every day for the rest of your life? Or would you rather have to deal with the fact that you have arms that are exactly four meters long every day for the rest of your life? Um, I'm going to go with the arm thing, the duck thing. Seems like that would be a problem in a social setting. And it's already bad enough trying to go into the bathroom. And then when you have a two-year-old that wants to stand there and watch you, that's annoying. 32 ducks standing there watching you. It just freaked me the fuck out. Um, so arms, although that would present a problem in the bathroom, too, with wiping your ass. I don't know where I got off on a bathroom tangent, but 
Yeah, um, arms. Is, that's what I've got. So keep up the good work. Talk to you guys later. It was a P person. A Purdue person. Purdue, nice. Lord, Lord Mike, let's see. Here's my issue. It's like you're always being followed by 32 ducks. Uh-huh. I'm assuming they're perpetual ducks. So if you kill one, they another regenerate. one walks up. Yeah. Oh, or another. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Or, or they, one like flies and lands. So, and I would, I would make a killing as a chef serving duck. Because I would just reach behind me, kill a duck, another one would keep coming. That does so seem I'd like ma- a... So I'd make my fortune with perpetual duck breath. That's a pretty, pretty big loophole. You could open up a um, market in Chinatown. Yep. And just, just the ducks hanging upside down, Peking duck all day long. Tyler's Duck Mart. Yep. Just right there. Damn right. So I'm going... <laughs> and since since this is America, mm-hmm. and we're not... Mm-hmm. We're not uh, we're not metric. I don't know. What, what are meters? Meter? I don't know. I don't know. Like uh, you take four of the things you put quarters in when you want to park and line them up together. <laughs> yep. And those are your arms. Those are your I arms. don't understand. That is not fun at all. I mean, I got to go ducks too because 32 ducks. Lord Mike, you mentioned that would get awkward socially. I think it is the complete opposite. I would never have to come up with an icebreaker ever, ever, ever again. It's always, <laughs> hey, I'm here. It's my 32 ducks. <laughs> And ducks are also, just so I can link it in the show notes, ducks also have the most horrific penises. They do. In the animal kingdom. They do. If you want to know exactly why they're so horrific, link in the show notes. Mm-hmm. It has to do with thorns. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and corkscrews. That's all the calls we got, buddy. That was good. That was, that was a good round of calls. I know. I love it. Let's see. Pe- people to thank. We're going to thank people on other Shit Mondays. Let's save it for Wednesday. Save it for okay. Until until let us know what you think, listener. Where when you want to be thanked? <laughs> yeah, where would you like to be? Well, thanked? thank you at your leisure. <laughs> and mainly, I say that because I don't have people to thank prepared yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it probably does belong on another shit Monday, but I don't have the list made. Okay, we'll work that out. <laughs> all right. Well, then that's all I got. So. Thanks for listening, everybody. You can find the show on iTunes or Stitcher. So to miss the next episode, we'll be talking about. IGN's 58th ranked game. <laughs> I love how we, yeah. we're so sure about it. <laughs> we're what very is professional it? and serious. What is the game? Donkey Kong Country 3. Dixie, Dixie Kong's, Kong's Double Trouble? Some, some <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> Fucking Dixie Kong. <laughs> While you're there, don't forget to subscribe. Give the show a five-star rating. Write a review. Probably win a prize. Yeah. I'll give a prize rundown on Wednesday show. Yeah, we've got a contest going, don't we? We do. We have we have a few contests. And I can't going. remember the deadlines we've set for them. So yeah, I, I yeah. think it has something to do with like Thanksgiving. Yeah, so you better better call, mm-hmm. better get yep. in soon. Mm-hmm. These contests We're running out of time. <laughs> Maybe I need to. I keep saying I need to put pictures up. Meg got a new iPhone that has a much better camera than mine. So once I can get her to take pictures of stuff, then I'll put them up. But yep, yeah, that's all I got. As always. Thank you for listening. We love the time that you've spent with us. And hopefully you spent it, as soon as you found out we were talking about Path of Exile, you were like, oh, well, I'll go ahead and download it and listen to this while I play it. Yep. <laughs> it's like we were there with you. Just <laughs> you're playing or we're just sitting behind you silently masturbating. <laughs> yeah. You could always assume that. Like, why are there some, why are there footprints in the sand? <laughs> well, Tad Pug's behind you masturbating. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why are there three sets of footprints? Well, because Jesus was carrying you and Tyler and Dave are walking behind him masturbating <laughs> <laughs> into the ocean. <laughs> oh, from whence we came. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Uh, we'll be back on Wednesday, like Tyler said. In the meantime, if you can't wait for more Tadpog love, you can find us on facebook.com slash Tadpog. Or tadpog.com, where Tyler's going to put a whole bunch of links to duck penises. Yeah, yep. <laughs> Just um, out, of my, out of my duck penis archive that I keep. <laughs> That's got to be a subreddit for sure. <laughs> uh, if you want to call our hotline and your name begins with a P or has a P in it, uh, well, fuck it. Even if it doesn't. Even, even if it doesn't. Even if it doesn't. <laughs> we'll take it. Uh, you can reach us at 270-883-2555. Operators are... Not there, because we are Because it's just a voicemail. <laughs> Tyler, Ooh. for now. For now. For now, our intro song is Moves by Sycamore Drive. A link to that track can be found in the show notes at tadpog.com. Hopefully, if they took to my begging, 
am I sick frog? Megalix, I've got this sick frog that needs an operation. So I could really, really use <laughs> an intro song that Arthur has written. <laughs> then we'll come to a special troubadour title. Troubadour. For <laughs> oh, nice. Man, Tad Fog, the Tad Fog worldscape is just coming together so nicely. Tab Pop Prongs, we just a fucked up medieval fair. That's <laughs> we should we should just rent out fairgrounds. <laughs> just rent, just the rent, rent, Tad Pog Renaissance Fair Prom. Okay, guys, it, I'm going to sell you on this concept. It's a Renaissance fair, but it's a Renaissance fair set in the early 1990s. <laughs> it's a time period within a time period. So you've got knights walking around in full suits of plate armor, and you also have kids in bright pink neon caps and fanny packs. <laughs> and a, dan- a, a, a dance floor where everybody has erections, and it's just, <laughs> right? it's just dudes. It's like that scene in Back to the Future 3 where they're dancing, except, you know, all of us are in the middle with our erections for <laughs> one another. Just too awkward to step away. <laughs> That's a show, right? Yep. Okay. How do I do a stinger? <laughs> <laughs>